Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it's been almost seven years since I passed my physician licensure examination or PLE and became a licensed doctor in the Philippines, but I still get a lot of questions from med students, clerks, and interns on how to pass one of the biggest and most difficult exams in their career as a doctor. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my three tips plus one bonus tip for studying for the PLE, which helped me rank third in the exam, which is also the same system I use for ranking first in my internal medicine board exam. And these also kept me sane during the whole process of studying while avoiding study burnout, let's go. Now, I've accepted early on in my life that I wasn't born as a smart kid at all. And it's not a humble brag, but actually, if you could ask my friends or the people I went to elementary and high school with, they would most likely say that I've always ranked at the bottom of the class and I wasn't like one of the best and brightest. And so as soon as I've accepted that, I realized that the only way for me to reach the same level as my peers to pass the PLE was to put in more time and effort than they did. And just a quick side note, I say same level as my peers in the context of passing the PLE because your final score in the PLE isn't based on the absolute number of answers that you get right. It's based on something called the mean passing level and we won't be going into the detail of about how they compute for that. But basically, the, to pass a PLE, you need to know what most other students taking the exam also know. So it's not just about hitting a fixed number of correct answers because you're basically being compared to the overall performance of the group. Now, going back to what I said earlier, this same idea of putting in more time and effort to pass an exam like the PLE is the same idea that athletes apply in sports so that they can become better than anyone else. They spend more time and effort in training so they can be, perform better during the actual game than anyone else. And that's the same thing with studying. If you start as early as now and you can sort of accumulate more study hours than everyone else, whether you're a clerk, an intern, or since by the time I've published this video, you'll be five months away from the April 2025 exam, then that's gonna help you cover more topics for the PLE. And obviously you'll stack the odds in your favor to pass the exam. And and I like this quote I've read that says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second best time is today. So in the same way, the best time to start studying for the PLE was last year, last month, or even last week, but the second best time is today. So now that you decided that you're gonna start studying for the PLE today, the next question is what exactly should you be studying? Now, I wouldn't suggest using the handouts or the past exams that you have during med school because the topics in med school do not closely reflect what topics frequently come out in the PLE. And I also wouldn't suggest using the question banks designed for medical exams abroad, like UWorld, AMBOSS, or like Trio, for the same reason that the topics that they cover are not the same ones covered in the PLE. And also the format of the question stems are not the same because in those question banks, they use what's called as two-step questions, which are question stems that require you first to diagnose the condition that's written on the stem, just like in this example, before you can then choose the right treatment among the four options, but the credit is only given for choosing the correct treatment among the options and not for the diagnosis. But in the PLE, the questions are what I call one-step questions, which is basically the opposite of two-step questions. So they mostly consist of like one-liner question stems, like this one that I'm showing you on screen. And you can find these in MedQBank, which is practice tests designed for the PLE. So for me personally, it really depends on what stage you're in right now. If you're a clerk or an intern, or if you're studying for the PLE on 2025, you can go with just reading the mother textbooks. Or if you'd want something that's kind of a distilled version of the most important concepts that you should know, I would suggest you could use first aid for the USMLE step one. Because even if it's a book for the USMLE, it can give you like a lot of super high yield information that you absolutely have to know for the PLE. And this is the book that I read from cover to cover, maybe twice during the two years of clerkship and internship. Even when I was studying for my PLE, back in 2017, I used it as a supplement to my top-notch handouts. And it's super fun to read actually because it has mnemonics and figures and illustrations that you won't find in regular textbooks. And aside from these, you can also use board review books like BRS Anatomy or BRS Physiology because those who already took the exam said that there were a lot of questions that were copy pasted from the book that came out in the actual exam. So if you want a complete list of resources that you can use for the PLE, I recorded a Zoom session with a bunch of students last year where I talked about that. And I also did a video about PLE last year 
and it should be somewhere up here, but I'll also put a link on those videos on the description below. Now, after you identify what the right resources are, the next question is, how do you study for an exam? Because it's one thing to know what to study, and it's another thing to know how. But before we go into how to study most effectively for the PLE, we first need to understand how our memories work. So we understand something by putting information into our brains, like when you read your lecture notes or watch lecture videos, but we learn and remember something by taking information out of our brains. Like when we actively try to answer a practice test or do flashcards. And the term for this is active recall, which I know most of you have probably heard of already. But between doing practice tests and doing flashcards, for me personally, what I did and what worked for me is doing practice tests. And that's for three reasons. Now, reason number one is because obviously the PLE is a multiple choice question exam with four options. And so doing practice tests will help in simulating the exam conditions so that you'll be more familiar with how it could look like in the actual exam. And you'll also be able to practice the skill of eliminating the other options so that you can get to the correct answer. Now, reason number two is because not everything in your board review books or handouts has an equal probability of coming out in your exam. I mean, yeah, ideally the exam should cover all the important topics and concepts that you can use in the real world when you're finally seeing and treating the real patients, but that's not how the exam works because the way questions are asked in the PLE is that the question stem does not get repeated exactly as it is, but what gets repeated is the question topic. And what I mean by that is, for example, last March 2023 in anatomy, there was a question back then about the relationship of surrounding structures to the ureter as it courses down from the kidneys to the bladder. So the next PLE, October 2023, there was another question about the ureter and its three constrictions. And then in April 2024, there was a question about the ureter, the bladder, and also the what is the narrowest part of the urethra, which is the membranous urethra. And most recently, during the October 2024 PLE, there was a question about ureteric stones. So as you can see, in the previous three PLEs, there was always a question about the urinary tubes. And so by doing practice tests, that are designed for the PLE. That sort of helps you in identifying what topics will most likely come out in the exam so you can focus on them instead of trying to read everything in your textbook or board review book. And the third reason is that you can get the benefits of active recall and you can remember more of what you study in less time versus, for example, rereading the handouts for the third time in a row. And I know some students would say, well, I'm not a fan of doing practice tests because it takes a long time to do and study the explanation. But so does rereading, you know, but I think you can get more returns for your time by doing practice tests instead of rereading or highlighting. Now, I'm guessing for a lot of you, this is probably not the first time you've heard about the, the low passing rate and all that negative talk about having to go through med school during the recent pandemic. But the first thing that I want to mention is that, especially if you've failed in the PLE in the past, is that it's not your fault. I mean, I know there's a lot of information out there and it can be confusing and it's keeping you from succeeding in the PLE and that's okay. And that's the reason I made this video, to somehow give you a map to figure out, to help you figure out how the PLE works and how to study for it. And I believe you can do this. And it doesn't matter if the Board of Medicine or the BOM makes the exam easy or hard because those are things that are not within our control. Just like how we can't control the weather or what people say about us, what we can control is our efforts and the time we put into studying for the exam. And I know you have a dream to become a doctor and make your loved ones proud and make an impact. And I want to tell you that it's possible with the right tools and strategy for the PLE. And so the bonus tip that I wanna share you, with you is to just focus on what's in your control. So now that you know how to study for the PLE, another question you might ask is that, how do you sit down and keep yourself focused while studying? And I recently made a video about that, which is about how to stay focused and become indistractable. Now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.